Thank you for purchasing one of my digital downloads. Here you'll find easy exercises that were created to increase your skill and confidence and help you become the kind of artist you want to be. These exercises are made up entirely from my imagination to show you how easy it is to simply imply detail with easy to paint brush strokes instead of trying to record the whole story. I'll demonstrate this by painting simple organic flower forms that are designed to help you loosen up your painting style. It is very important to complete the suggested exercises quickly to avoid becoming too detail oriented. Repeat them often until you are completely comfortable with the process and in the doing you will be on your way to becoming the kind of artist who creates works of art instead of one who merely paints pictures. So let's get started. In this example, we're going to use the form of the geranium uh, to uh, create a shape that will remind us of the geranium flower. You can see it has some uh, specific characteristics and so it is uh, going to be very easy then to uh, draw these little shapes in to make the viewer believe that it is a geranium. So a simple organic shapes, forget about all the petals, uh, but you're just going to have something uh, that re uh, recognizes the outside edge of this. And look at all of the little stems that come down. If I can put those in and then put these uh, pods that come down, it's going to be very believable. And again, you don't have to be a great artist to do this. Uh, if you can draw these simple shapes, that can become a geranium. You could combine these shapes and have a whole pot of geraniums very easily. But I start with this one. It's best to just start simple. And once you perfect this, then you can go on to add more. And I'm going to repeat that pattern. Pretty simple. It's an organic shape, and we'll put in the line work that will represent the stems, and we will imply these pods that come off of it. And then we'll have the main stem coming down. We can imply these petals that are here with our palette knife and our brush strokes. Instead of using alizarin crimson this time, I'm going to use vermilion. It's a brighter orangey or red, and it's a perfect color uh, for the geranium. This is the vermilion. It's a, also a great glaze if you want to glaze sunshine in. It's not a very dark pigment, so in order to get your value, you are going to have to add a darker color like the alizarin crimson. But uh, let's first do our little value scale at the top, and we're going to do 20%. That's a little bit more, so I'll add a little water to that. And look how easy it is then to adjust the value. This is how you adjust the value when you're painting a full painting. And then we're going to uh, come a little darker with a little stronger pigment to water ratio. And as we want to get darker with this, we're going to have to add alizarin crimson. And we'll get a little bit of a Prussian blue to that, and we'll get this dark value there. That is pretty. So those are the three values. I hope that shows up on the camera, uh, three mid values and a dark. This one may need to be a little darker. It's not showing up too well in this light, but so adjust that until you can get you can see the difference. Now we're going to start with a 20% mid value and we're going to cover as we did in the other uh, exercises. We're just going to cover this shape with pigment, watery pigment, uh, so that we have a base to work on. 
and uh, we're going to leave our edges rough and ragged. Uh, and so they will look a little like petals, maybe. It's so much easier to paint once you can get away from uh, thinking of these uh, shapes as things. Now we're going to start adding value. And we're going to add some sunshine. I think on this one, I will use the Hansa Yellow Deep to uh, imply the sun because the Benzamita Orange is so close to that vermilion. So I'll switch here and we'll see the difference. Now I'm going to get a darker value by adding some alizarin crimson into this and not much water. And I'm going to try to imply uh, the look of petals. Tone down that yellow a little bit there. And now we're going to bring the uh, stem work down. I already have this uh, organic greenish browny olive color that I can use. I can add a little more sap green to this and use that. Green and red are beautiful together. Of course, they're complements to one another, so that's a good color combination. And now I'm going to use the brush creatively and try to create this stem work that we're talking about. But not, uh, not getting everything perfectly lined up because then it's a boring passage. Broken color is always best. And see, that's an interesting passage right here because I broke the color. And uh, we're going to use this same color for the tops of these pods. They're just brush strokes. So simple. And we'll put the red below that. Now we'll pick up some of this red and let the... Uh, the, the uh, bloom that is just starting to try to open here, show through. There. And maybe get those a little darker. To match that value. And while this is still wet, we're going to do some petals. I'm using the almost the whole edge of this palette knife in order to get a wider mark. Now we're going to try for this darker value, and we're going to even get darker than that. I'm going to go all the way to black with this. I'm going to get my uh, burnt sienna and put it over here with this Prussian blue that I had started as a dark mix. And we're going to do some line work. We'll connect these little shapes. More important is that you're getting the value in there uh, than that you're making something that is uh, true to reality. We'll get some of this dark green that I had and we'll do a little calligraphy around these pods. And that will sort of uh, pop them out a little bit. And now we'll get pure Lizard crimson, and we'll do some outside work along these edges here.
So it's not exactly a, a botanical replication of this actual geranium. But I think it's much more artistic than the photo itself. I don't recommend fo painting from photos ever because they will lead you down the wrong path and it will sap you of any creativity that you might have as long as you're trying to replicate. You cannot get into the creative side of your brain. So put this away and then do your simple form and uh, see what you come up with.